From the Century Clubhouse Theater in New York City, this is The Talk Show, starring Eric Metaxas. I'm Alvin Sadar, along with Zach Mullen and the Clubhouse Band, inviting you to join Eric and his guest, Carrot Top. From the Partridge family, Danny Bonanucci, TikTok megastar, Adam Wahid, and comedian, Sammy Pescatelli. Ladies and gentlemen, He's got a jar of peanut butter, and he's not afraid to use it. Here's Eric Metaxas! Hey! Oh! Wow! news in the world of show business. Harrison Ford will be returning for a fifth Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. Yeah, in this one, Harrison will find an ancient artifact by looking in the mirror. Oh! Oh, did you see that coming? Did you see, okay. In, yeah. I wanted to start on an insulting note. Was that okay? I hope that was okay. Uh, okay. In other entertainment news, the uh, Kardashian family's reality TV home has been listed for sale. Uh, like the Kardashians, the house is vacant inside. Yeah. A Spirit Airlines plane that landed in Atlanta caught fire on the runway. Nobody got hurt, but Spirit hit all the passengers with an exorbitant flame extinguishing fee. <laughs> yeah, You've, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, all right, here's something else. This is kind of hard to believe. Barbie's longtime companion, Ken, uh, just turned 61 years old. Wow. Yeah, and he said the perfect gift for his birthday would be to finally get a prostate. <laughs> That is excellence right there, <laughs> excellence. A pair of Ohio radio DJs broke a Guinness Book World Record when they conducted an on-air interview, single interview, that lasted over 25 hours. One of the DJs said, it was a piece of cake. We just sat down with Kanye West and asked him to tell us a little bit about himself. <laughs> right. This is, this is weird, this is true, this is medical information. In India, doctors removed 526 teeth from a seven-year-old boy's mouth. That's, that's true. The boy is recovering nicely, however, the tooth fairy declared bankruptcy. <laughs> Hey, everybody, say hello to Alvin Sadar, the man, the myth, the legend. The legend in his own mind, and that's good enough for me, Alvin. Yeah, that's thank a start. You. That's it's a me start. And right. What? What? Uh, what? It's, it's, a, it's a start. Oh. You know, recently I was in Las Vegas. I had an amazing opportunity uh, to meet and have a conversation with a real legend of comedy. He goes by the name Carrot Top. I gotta be honest with you, he was so much fun to meet and talk to. I was astonished at what a generous, sweet soul he was. And I wanna play that clip for you right now. Here it is. I have no idea. Hi there. Hey. I mean, is Carrot Top here? Yeah, come on in. Oh, man. Oh, the thing. Oh, hey, man. Carrot Top. Let's this try. is so great. What's happening? Do you happening? live here? What is this? I do not live <laughs> This is amazing. I should live here. I mean, I've stayed here. This is here. amazing. Thank you for letting Thank me you. into your Thank you. Thank you for coming to the, to the cave. It looks like <laughs> I'm just honored to, to be here. This is like the entertainment capital of the world. Yeah. You have performed this show yeah. thousands of times. Yes. Y y you've been on The Tonight Show mm. 30 times. Yeah. 
how do you come up with you know? I'm not new telling jokes? you my secret. No, but, guitar. but if you were going to, like, what would you say? Well, you wouldn't want to do what I do anyhow. How do you know? Well, but I you've mean, been such a success. I mean, I think I'd like to. Yeah, borrow but no one steal. wants to be the next Carrot Top. If you haven't noticed, there hasn't been another Carrot for good reasons. I don't think anyone wants the abuse. You, I'll sh I brought a few from my warehouse. That, now these are these are from like, your warehouse. I have a warehouse full of hate mail and old props that never right, worked. Right. Mm -hmm. An ice tray. An ice it's tray. An ice tray that has a don't level. Have anymore? No, I don't think so. You have a level, so you wouldn't spill the water. We had to put it back. This was one of the very first ones. I lived with my grandmother when I started doing comedy. Because every grandmother, they keep the house really hot. Right. right. My grandma's like 110 degrees. Right. So I made this thermos. This is not a joke, by the way. I made this thermos out for her wall, and I said, right. look, grandma, it's on 80. Right. And the one behind it would actually control the Oh! Outdoor. So she, I, you know, I, I tricked her. Wow. But, you know, we got to so do So you pioneered elder abuse. I am absolutely did. I love that about For you. For years. I love that. When grandma makes you food, you can't say you don't like her food. You can't so say it's a, that. It's a plate that has a disappearing tray. Oh. That way you can give it to the dog and not get not hurt her feelings. It's like I love your potato salad. Right, exactly. So these are all these are all carrot classics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no longer in the show. People should know George Carlin, the genius comedian George Carlin, said that you were funny. He, he did. In other words, if, if you are criticized by lesser comedians because they're jealous of your success. Oh, did you read this about when I said that? I did. I I, did yes, I did. I've said this in the past. But this is beautiful. Well, it is beautiful. I think as a young comic, especially even, even forget being a young comic, just being a comic that you've gone on for years, and um, everyone has a a, a, a feelings yeah. that can be hurt. And so when you're, you're even if you're successful and people rip on you, it still hurts you, it still bites at you. So I used to get all upset when people would make fun of me. And then one night I was I was hanging out with George Carlin and I never forgot. It was kind of like when I was a kid, my mom would say things like, um, you know, that picked on school. She yeah. said, consider the source. And I never forgot that. It was the source that you really had to think about. So if you have some comic in Nebraska in a basement making fun of me, yeah. that's never done comedy. By the way, I know that guy. I know that guy too. And then you have someone like George Carlin, who's, yeah. who's like, you know, George Carlin. Yeah. And says, literally, Karen Top's a funny kid. Yeah. He kind of, you kind of try to, to right. you know, blur out the other. But as, as human beings, we always have that, no matter what, even George Carlin said, I'm great. You always have that one voice that's telling you you're not good. So it, it's just, it's, it's being a human. I didn't know that you had this serious, thoughtful side. I know. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm amazed. I did until we started rolling. This. I know, it's, it's beautiful. Kind of me it's out. beautiful. You know, I love it. Happy. I love it. If there wasn't this kooky background. Right, here's an old one. Well, look at this. It was like, this is maybe the first second prop I ever made. It was a cowboy boot with a kickstand, so rednecks would fall down when they were drunk. Look at that. <laughs> now, these are, they're skinny jeans for fat guys. <laughs> so, this thing kills. You, you look, end on this with a look, pyro shot. Like the, like the, so you're in a bar, right? right? And you want to hit on someone at a bar, you can't see, right? Because the lights are down. It's dark. Right. But this is true. a beer yeah. that has a light built into it. See, that way from a distance, you can kind of scope it out and kind of see before you walk up to them. Mm. Mm. And then there's two jokes. Look, thank God I had my bud light. Oh, dude. You close yeah, on this one. It's a microphone for Mick Jagger. I want to do <laughs> 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 right? The, the, yeah, right. Vegas, baby. Yeah, right. Ah, ah. I, I, didn't know. I hope that your watchers uh, enjoyed this little segment. I don't care about them. No. I care about them. I enjoyed this very much. I'm so grateful to you. I actually love you. I'm going to hug you now. I'm going to hug you. Oh, yeah, you. I love thank you. Thank you. That meant a lot to me. Thank, thank you. you. My wallet. Thank you. Oh, come on. And we're out. Nice, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I got to. I gotta say, he honestly, he, he just blessed me so much. He's so sweet. The interview was way longer. We'll put it someplace where you can watch it. Don't go to Vegas, but if you have to go, make sure you check out Carrot Top. He's brilliant. Now, let me so say that our show, yeah, he is. No, he is. And the other comics hate him because he's way more successful than they are. Um, now, tonight's show is just loaded with talent. I don't know where to start. We have TikTok influencer Adam Waheed. Wait till you see this guy. We have, we have hilarious comedian Tammy Pescatelli. Oh, don't you worry. And, uh, and then we, we have someone that I, I honestly can't believe that he's here, but we have uh, the real deal, Danny. Bonaducci is here. Yeah. 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 And um, good stuff. 
And it's not some, you know, phony video thing. He's actually in the building. He came here. And I, I just want to say, I wanted to, uh, you know, just to reflect, Alvin, if, if you don't mind, I'll use you as my foil. Do you mind? Please. please. Foil you're you're be literally right. being paid for this, so you can't mind. I am? Yeah, no, I, wanna, I, wanted to, I wanted to, not much. We're, we're, um, <laughs> but I just want, I wanted to share, I wanted to kind of explain, because we all have um, strange relationships with, with fame. I mean, it happens to me. I've written all these books. People come up to me. They can't believe they're meeting the guy that wrote this book that they, you know, their parents forced them to read in homeschool or something like that. <laughs> and, but I'm saying it's a, it's a kind of a funny thing. And I have felt that, because when I was you know, seven years old watching the Partridge family, it imprinted itself onto my soul, which is why I'm so messed up. It's true. And um, no, but it really did. And there's an innocence to that program. Uh, and there's an innocence to the music, because this was like 1970, it was like bubble gum, pop, whatever, whatever. But I, I thought of this. Because it was a fake band, it's like the monkeys, right? right? Like the monkeys didn't write their own music, which is why they have so many hits. Because they, the TV people, they, you know, they, they had money. They said, let's get the best uh, songwriters to write the greatest poppy bubblegum stuff. So Partridge Family has tons of hits. And then on top of that, they had Shirley Jones, one of the greatest singer-actresses yeah. ever. Uh, music Man. She and the, yes, she's in the Music Man. I mean, you know, they, they, they got the best. And they got somebody who was not known at the time, but obviously David Cassidy. And there is almost nobody, there's almost nobody who can sell a song like David Cassidy. I studied this. Uh, he, he could take a song, some of the songs are not even that great, but he manages to sell it because he had a beautiful voice and he's doing it. So, it really imprinted itself on me. And so a lot of us have this relationship with stuff. You just can't believe that you're meeting somebody that you, know, you, you watched when you were a kid. And anybody who remembers the show knows that Danny stole the show. Yeah. Every, every show. He stole the show. And that's why everybody hates him. No, it's why they love him. But it's, it's kind of like Jimmy J.J. Walker, right? He wasn't supposed to be the star of Good Times. But he was just like he stole the show, so they built it around him. The same thing with Arthur Fonzarelli, who, since he's a friend, I call him the Fonz. Um, but you, you get these characters. And Danny was that kind of a character and stuff. So I feel like, and we all feel this way, you feel like you know somebody, right? You don't, but you feel like you know them. That's how I feel about Danny Bonaduce. So I just thought the fact that we could get him on this show, I am very, very excited. So when we come back, mm -hmm. Danny Bonaduce is my guest. Thank you. <laughs> Coming up, Danny Bonaducci, mega TikTok star Adam Wahid, and comedian Danny Pescatelli, right here on The Talk Show. Well, welcome back. My next guest, as I think you know, played the wisecracking, precocious Danny Partridge on the 1970s hit TV series, The Waltons. Just kidding. <laughs> the Partridge family. These days, he's still wowing audiences on the Danny Bonaducci and Sarah Morning Show on Seattle's 102.5 KZOK. Please welcome the one and only Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> You know, this theater, uh, this was Liberace's old theater, can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling? Because you recently had a weird medical scare. The weirdest thing in the whole wide world, man. Uh, I, I was walking from my uh, uh, bedroom to the living room, which is few, up a few stairs, and I fell. And I thought I just tripped. And Amy, that's my wife, heard the thud and came around. She said, are you OK? To which I said, yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. I just fell. But apparently, words weren't coming out of my mouth. Just dribble, just sounds. And so we went to the hospital where I stayed for a week. And to this day, I do not know what the hell happened to me. And uh, it was serious, whatever it was. It made Oprah call me. So you know you're doing all right. You're sick, and Oprah calls to see if you're all right. You're doing OK. But I still don't know what it was. 
Oprah called you up. I mean, yeah. so she, so she's a fan of the Partridge Family. No, she. Well, yeah, I would imagine so. Uh, <laughs> she was our core audience, if you will. Uh, no, I've done her show a few times. Okay. Yeah. Every now and again, uh, <laughs> I get arrested for something, and when I do, the talk show is called. Isn't that interesting? Because I was thinking of having you on before you were next arrested. And <laughs> oh, that's why, yeah. yeah. So when you're jump. arrested next, I just want you to know I already had you, you on. You had me first. I had I you on. <laughs> um, gosh, this, uh, I mean, I, I want to talk a little bit about the relationship because obviously you get this a lot that people who made a connection with that show and the music yeah. and with you, because you were so stinking cute. Thank you. That even I, who was an unbelievably cute child, I imagine watching that. you, I thought you were cute. Like, I, that's, you were that wow. cute. No. You know, it's like Popeye says, my muscles got muscles. Like, you were so cute that a cute kid hey, of your uh, age, I thought you were cute. No, but you were. I was. And you knew that you had this talent. Now, do you think it's just inherent because of the redhead? Because you're like, you know. I will tell you this. Redhead. I was watching your show and everything, the warm-up guy who does an excellent job. Uh, I got to see this beautiful crowd here. And there's a kid, and you know, I don't make the camera guy search for this child, but there's a little boy in there, about Partridge Family age, with bright red hair. Uh, that kid, oh, he pointed to him? That kid could be my son, man. Huh? Huh? Yeah. I, I, you know, I hate to do this to your son, because you look like a very nice young man, but can I say one thing? <laughs> this is your future. <laughs> nice, thank you. <laughs> Here's the thing. Yeah. So, I was, so we're talking about this, this fame thing, right? And I thought to Where myself, does hell fame? Well, if, th that's the whole thing. Because people feel that they know you. Yeah. And have license to say whatever they want to you. Is that right? Yeah, sure. Sure. What, what is the wackiest thing? What do people say? Okay, wackiest. I've had hundreds, but I'll tell you this. And I'd be on the spot and I'd be mad at you. But if this didn't happen just the other day, we have a, a place called Pike Place Market in Seattle. Wonderful place. Tours called the cruise ships come in. And a guy comes up to me and says, Has anybody ever told you? You look just like Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> well, I think saying, I am Danny Bonaducci, is very, you know. <laughs> so I, I don't say I am, because this happens a lot. I say, he says, has anybody ever told you you look just like Danny Bonaducci? And I say, every day of my life. And usually, <laughs> usually they get it at that point. Oh, yeah. But he said, I said, so yeah, a lot of people say I look like Danny Bonaducci. He said, do you do it on purpose? <laughs> that I said, if, if I could look like any celebrity, why would I pick Danny Bonaduce? You went through some really, really, really hard times. Really hard times. I think you put one too many reallys in there, but yeah, really, really, <laughs> really, really hard times. It is the classic story of the child star. You're super famous. Super fit, crazy famous. Going through hell. Yeah. Like you were like watching. living living in a car with yeah. no money. I lived in my car, had no money whatsoever. And I will say this, I mentioned Oprah earlier. Like I didn't want to tell her I live in my car. Hey, I'm a big drug addict. Oh, I didn't want to do that. And you were a drug addict. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not forget that. And but here's what being on the Oprah Winfrey show meant to me. It meant a first class ticket. And what did that mean? That meant meals. I could eat if I did Oprah Winfrey show. I'd get there, I'd make like four grand or something crazy. Well, I hadn't seen four grand in a hundred years. And then I would take the flight home for the same thing. And then I would get from the airport and live in my car. It was the weirdest thing at all. I'm doing Oprah. She's talking to me like we're old friends. And then I'm getting off the first class thing and moving into my car. It was weird. Oh, thank you. Uh, when did you get like clean and sober? What year are we talking about? Oh, uh, clean and sober, 10 years ago, I think. I don't wow. count the days. But yeah, <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, anybody uh, who loved the Partridge family the way I did, part of the sweetest part of that show was the banter between you and David Cassidy, yeah. but also mm -hmm. the unbelievable banter and tension between you and Dave Madden. Dave Madden, Ruben Kincaid. The guy taught me, because I didn't really have a real tight relationship with my dad. But he was certainly of the age to be my dad. And he Ruben took, Kincaid, yeah, and Dave Ruben Madden. Did, yeah, and he took the part like kind of seriously. He taught me, he taught me, <laughs> taught me how to drive, which is like because he's a he was he was a maniac, Dave Madden, in a good way. Uh, and when <laughs> we're going to his house because uh, I was having problems at home, I didn't want to go home. And Dave Madden, Ruben Kincaid, essentially adopted me, and I would go to his house right on the beach for the weekends. And he goes, I think it's time for you. You had to learn to drive a car. And I said, okay. And I couldn't reach the pedal, so I sat on his lap, and I had the wheel. And we're driving down to Panic to Panga Canyon, which is perilous at best. And uh, it's a cliff. And he says, all right, now, Danny, you drive. Uh, 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 and passed out. He said, I'm having a heart attack, which I thought, okay. But then he really sold it. For the next 12 minutes, I'd take a turn, and he'd go, bang! 
bang, just bang his head off the window. He pretended yeah, yeah, to, to be unconscious yeah. to help you learn how to drive. Yeah, that's exactly. You know, when you, the way you say it, it sounds weird the way you say it. <laughs> that, is, that is unbelievable. Yeah, did you yeah. put that in your book? Oh, I'm sure I did. I don't know. I haven't read it. Wait. It's just, <laughs> I, I. Thank you again. I actually, I think I read that in your book, but it's more slurred. Yeah. Uh, oh, so you got yeah. the advanced copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, folks, when we come back, more with Danny Bonaducci. Coming up, more with Danny Bonaducci, mega TikTok star Adam Wahid, and comedian Tammy Pescatelli, right here on The Talk Show. These guys really know how to play those instruments. Yeah, apparently. Right? Apparently. It's not just for some. It's not just for some TV program. No. No. Although it is, in a way. Hey, in a way, we're yeah. back <laughs> with the legendary Danny Bonaducci. Not to be confused with the non-legendary right. Danny Bonaducci. Right. Now, I gotta ask you. You stayed very close to David Cassidy. I did. Literally till his dying day. That's I had true. the privilege of meeting him. I uh, went to a concert. I don't know, five, six years ago, like two years before he died. And I literally went to his last concert. I didn't know that it was going to be his last right, concert. Right, right, right. But I could tell things were not good when I was at the concert. No. And so tell us about this, because it's so sad. He was estranged from his family mm -hmm. when he was dying. What yeah. was going on? Uh, I, I'll tell you this. It, it was weird, because I always wondered about this, because there's David Cassidy, and that's the Cassidy I focused on. But Sean Cassidy, his little brother, was a big pop star, sold a lot of records, did a lot of concerts, and now he's one of the biggest uh, uh, producers in Hollywood. He produces New Amsterdam, you know that show, New Amsterdam? Yeah. Sean Cassidy is the producer of that show, who'd have thought it? Uh, and he, he didn't talk to them anymore, and his dying words, it's gonna make me cry, so hang wait, on. Wait, wait, hang on a second. All right. Just, I wanna track here. So he wasn't even talking to his brother, Sean, no. at this point? Mm -mm. Okay, that's very bad. Yeah, as, as far as I understood, there were no people named his Cassidy wife in his life. His was, wife was no longer talking to him. Right. She was, like, bitter. Because he did a Piers Morgan interview, and he was, like, talking to her at the, in, in the camera, like, 2014, trying to get her to whatever. So that was bitter. Yeah. But even his brother, Sean, was not talking to him. No, and but believe me, I don't want to pick sides. David Cassidy could be a huge hassle. He didn't make things easy on people that loved him. And uh, so I can't, I'm not, I'm not going, oh, Sean, you should have been kinder, because maybe David Cassidy should have been kinder. But either way, they weren't speaking, and I found that very sad. That is, that's extremely sad. Now, were you with him right at the end? Not right at the end. The end was, I believe, in Chicago. And, uh, you know, that's the thing that the ends have coming. You don't know they're happening. It just happened. And one day, David Cassidy was there, and one day, he wasn't. And he's surrounded by, you know, his family's flown in, and they're not all there. And his last words, as I understand it, were, so much wasted time. And I thought, yeah, because I don't, my family and I, we're not that close often. And he said, di his dying words were, so much wasted time. And it meant so much to me, I had it tattooed on my chest. These are David Cassidy's last words. I, as weird as that is, I, I, I don't know. Now, you know that tattoos are permanent. I do, I know it now. Because I'm, I'm you know, I have six different women's names tattooed on my body. I just, I, I don't, I swear, I have Amy, I have Amy and love and, and she says, well, I'm the last one, go get the others taken off. And I said, I will. Do you know how bad it hurts to get a tattoo taken off? So we're just living with the tattoos now. Well, but, but so what do those words mean? Because when I heard that those were his last words, it's not entirely clear to me. What do you think he meant when he I said think, so much wasted I time? I think he meant, this was so silly that I didn't speak to my family, that I didn't take the cherished time that I could have had with my brothers. And uh, I feel like he, he missed that. And he, it was present. And, you know, he was really sick when he died. But he was present of mind to say, I wished I hadn't have done this. And he said, so much wasted time. And then drifted off. It's like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to cry. That's I do. tough stuff. Well, I don't want to. It just happens that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've been doing something on TikTok recently. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I will. I'll tell you about it because it wasn't, it wasn't my idea. This was my wife's idea. She's... Uh, your, cur with, your current wife. Yes, Amy. Yeah. The, one that we, the one that I don't owe money to. Amy. Oh. Um, <laughs> we were in some record shop, and she has a vinyl record collection. It's important to her. And... Well, thank you. I'll, I'll tell you approved. Uh, what the heck is that? Black so cylinders, anybody? 
No? No. So uh, there's, a, there's a departure family records, and I said, well, yeah, I, I have that one. He goes, no. She said, no, this will be funny. Sign it and put it back. So she videotaped me signing a departure family and putting it back, and I don't know anything about TikTok or any of that stuff. I got a million views on TikTok for defacing somebody's record. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. It's, it's comfortable vandalism. That's my, what I call it. My, pro <laughs> my producers thought it would be a good idea if we had an album for you to sign. Oh, really? Hey. No, nah, I'm just saying that. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. And they, they got an album, a Partridge Family album, randomly. Yeah. They, they bought it. And it, it happens to be the one that I got for Christmas in 1970. Look at that. Look at I got, that. I got this. I got this for Christmas uh, in 1970, not this literal one, but right, okay. that they didn't have to know. And I was just wondering if maybe, you know, you'd, you'd deface it for me. I, I yeah. would love to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Danny Bonaducci. Yeah. There you go. Thank you very much. My now, thank okay, you, Aaron. This is what the producers, you know, this was their idea, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I, my mother probably burned all my Partridge Family albums, you know, you know, when I got off the drugs and everything. But, but I, I just want to be clear, just to show that I'm a real fan, about 20 years ago on eBay, um, I bought this, and I thought, maybe, oh, wow. maybe, uh, I just wanted to, I just wanted you to know that I have my own Partridge Family collection. What, what the heck, you might as well sign this too. I'll but, sign that too. But I just yeah, want yeah. you to know, the producers did not get this for me. This was, uh, this is part of my private collection. My wife doesn't know about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, and, and by the way, before the show, we had Danny sign an album, uh, and we hid it in the audience. One of you, under your seat, has an autographed Partridge Family album. Everybody should take a look and see who it is. Somebody, somebody, oh, somebody. Go. Who's got Somebody, it? somebody. Whoa! Big we have a winner. We have a winner. We nice. have a winner. Well, yeah. yeah. And you, you get to keep that. That's uh, just for you. I okay, can't believe so, you have the board game. Yeah, how sick Jeez, is this? That's crazy. I, I'm a straight adult man, and I even, have this. Even I don't yeah. have the board right. game. I'm, nobody's that kitschy. <laughs> okay, we're, um, we're going to gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna keep you around. Whatever but you want, when man. we come back, uh, stay tuned, folks. We have TikTok mega influencer Adam Wahid. We'll be right back. <laughs> You're blocking the mirror. What? I can't see my pump. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I'll move. Now you're blocking my delts. What? Yeah, you're blocking my delt mirror. I can't see my pump. All right, man. I'll back up. Now you're blocking my calf mirror. I can't see my pump. <laughs> Okay, folks, there are a lot of roads to comedy fame. Usually, people go through the Borscht Belt, but my next guest is so young, he not only never heard of the Borscht Belt, he doesn't really even know what Borscht is. <laughs> he's never even pronounced the letter B. That's true. Is that true? He's that young. No, but uh, he, he's, uh, for, for him, the path to comedy was TikTok. Almost 17 million followers wow. later, He's one of the most popular comics on the app, and we are thrilled he's with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Adam Wahid. Oh my goodness. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Good, man. That's the most important thing of all, that I'm having fun. Actually, I, I don't know where to start. I mean, first, let me ask you like a really basic question, and I'm only half kidding when I ask this. What is TikTok? <laughs> okay. I mean, every, every time I ask my daughter, she kind of rolls her eyes and walks out of the room. 
And uh, I can I should never probably really walk, understand. I, I should probably walk out. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly, I know. Okay. It's so offensive. Yeah. So it's like saying, I, what is music? Uh, but, you know, for, for our generation, it was tic tac. It was a breath mint. Yeah. It, was a, it was a breath mint. And it was very simple. You're going on a date. You take a, you know, take a tic tac. Now it's a whole different thing. And I just got to ask you, how did you get into it? What gave you the idea to start making these videos? How did this happen? Well, first off, I'm offended. Um, <laughs> Most right. the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just get that out of the okay. way. Uh, okay. So, well, the app itself is just an app where you can basically express yourself in whichever way you want to an uh, audience of millions of people. So, how I started is I wanted to, uh, I wanted to act. I wanted to be a comedian, and nobody was really giving me opportunities. So, I just made one of myself by creating my own videos and putting it out there. See so, you now. This is, I, I just find this fascinating. So you knew you wanted to do comedy, yeah. and you decided, I'm gonna try it this way. Well, I tried it every other way. It just yeah, didn't you work. tried it every other way? This was a last resort for me. Yeah? yeah. Um, and then if, this, if, if TikTok didn't work, I probably would've just gave up. But um, yeah, I tried every other route first. So do you remember the first video that you made? Yeah, it's pretty embarrassing. Um, you and me both, sister. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're on TikTok. No, my wife is. Okay, that counts. Thank you. Yeah. My wife's a big fan, by the way. Oh, yeah. thank you. Oh, I, I gotta said, check out her what's she's, she's seen a lot of your stuff and, and thinks you're great. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. That, that's the cool thing. Like, I never really know my audience. It's so, like, diverse and wide, yeah. and, like, different age ranges. But the first video I made, uh, which has now been deleted and burned, um, <laughs> was, uh, it was a really bad idea. It was, like, this character that I had called Long Story Short Guy. And basically, I tell this really long story, but the whole time I'm saying long story short. I Actually, hold on a second. That sounds like a very funny idea. Yeah, it sounds it funny. You know, it sounds great. That's why I did it. And then when I posted it, nobody laughed. <laughs> um, and, and, and actually, people reached out and was like, what, I don't get it. Like, what? And, I, and like, when you have to explain something, yeah. it's not funny anymore. No, true. Right about that. Um, true. And, and that was the first one, and it's, it's, it got deleted a long time ago. All right. But well, it was a good idea. Short. It was a good idea. I think now that you're like a total pro, you should try it again. The long story short, yeah. guys? Long story short. I'll watch, yeah. Uh, yeah. We can help you. We're old. We know how to, you know. <laughs> yeah. We understand. We understand. Spe speaking of which, uh, could, could somebody uh, our age uh, or Albin's age post <laughs> TikTok? Albin is technically old, even older than we are. Wow. Very little, very little. But, but, I mean, could we get on TikTok, or is that just, is it just a realm where, where people of a certain age shouldn't go? Absolutely not. Not playing. Uh, you guys, yeah, you guys can be on TikTok. There's different, like, age ranges. There's tons of people on TikTok. I mean, I mean, if you're gonna embarrass yourself, it's not really based off your age. It's just uh, the content you're making, you know? I just love the idea of an older generation wrecking the whole thing the way we did with Facebook. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing on there? Yeah, maybe I'll get on there. And then you'll get <laughs> off there, won't you? Yeah. yeah. And then we took it over. We took it over. So, but um, I, I guess that's, look, most of your content, and it's one of the things that, that attracted me to you. It's clean. It's family friendly. Oh, nice. That is yeah. important to most people. Yeah. Uh, but why was it important to you? Yeah, I think it just gives me the ability to reach more people. Like, my goal is to make as many people laugh, not one specific demographic. So... By being clean, it allows me to reach anybody, a kid, an adult. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. It's nice, man. It's yeah. really nice. And, and the thing, too, is like, there, there's a lot of kids watching, right? So you want to set the right example. Um, and it also helps me make a lot of money, but that's not the point. <laughs> yeah, so that's not why I do it. That's not why I do it. I'm just wondering how famous would Red Fox be if he had chosen this path? Uh, not many people get the Red Fox humor. Yeah. Um, your videos also contain a lot of physical comedy. When did you discover that you're good at physical comedy? So when I actually first started, I was doing like background work for other people's videos. Oh, okay. Right? This is like, it's funny to hear background work for a TikTok. That, that's a but, gig? Yeah, it's a gig. You can get a I gig was, doing I, background work in TikTok videos. I was that guy. Wow. Yeah. It's cool those, to meet that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those days are over now. Yeah. But I would go do it, and of course, when you do background, you don't get any lines, right? right? So the only way I could be funny is if I'm physical. Like, even if I'm in the video for two seconds. Uh -huh. So 
one time I did a video where um, I was in a rap battle, but I was just like, the ba I was in the background, I was one of the hype guys. A what battle? Uh, a rap battle. Oh, a rap battle. Yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. A rap yeah. I've heard of that. It was yeah. like a parody, it was a comedy yeah. sketch. Yes. It was a parody yes. rap battle, and I was just one of the hype guys in the background. And the whole video, I just slept while I was standing up. Like, I was sleeping while I was standing up. I was literally just like this. The whole video. Nobody even noticed. Nobody even knew I was doing it, right? When the video came out, nobody talked about the rap battle. I was like, yo, that guy in the background sleeping is Sleep. hilarious. <laughs> and um, that's when I knew. That's when that's I knew. That's when you knew? That's when I knew that's I had the gift. The faking. <laughs> You, know, you have the gift. I, I mean, tell. not a lot of people would think that faking unconsciousness would be your path to success. I was standing up, though, the whole time. Yeah, faking unconsciousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was standing implied. Up. Okay. Standing was implied. up. All right, listen, you're, you are honestly, you're the master of this. And uh, the question is, would you help us now to make a TikTok video? Wow. Right now. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. All right. Let's do yeah, it. What do we do? Stand okay, up. What do we do? All right. Do you guys want to like? You, guys you want us to pretend we're sleeping? Yeah, no, no, no. I already did that one. Oh, um, right. Okay, maybe. Hold on. I think my mic pack went down my pants. Sorry. I'll get it. Uh, I got it. Uh, okay. There we go. There it is. Okay. You guys want to stretch first? I don't want anyone to get hurt. Wow. What the hell is happening? Yeah, yeah. Maybe get a little loose. Get a little loose. Let me see. Yeah. Let me see. You stretch out a little bit, huh? Give me a squat. Yeah. Squat. Okay. Yeah, Can I be in the background? Yes. I be in the background? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I will need uh, one volunteer from the crowd, though. Yes. A Raise volunteer? your hand if you want to. Come on. I know you guys want to be in TikToks. Come on. Hello. One right. of those rotten kids? How about one okay. of those rotten kids right there? Okay. No, I don't know. Well, I guess, you, I guess, wait, before you pick... I pick a volunteer, I need a, I need, I need, I need a phone. I need a my phone. phone? Yeah. Who's got his Does phone? Does anybody want to offer their phone? No. Yeah, typically uh, 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 these videos are made with phones. Okay, we're going to film it on my TikTok. I knew that. Oh, okay. okay, this is great. I think I'll use you as my volunteer. You look like you're dying to be in a TikTok. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. Like okay. Yeah. All right. This is what we're gonna do. So there's a big challenge on TikTok. Have you guys heard of the napkin challenge? The no. napkin challenge? Yeah. No, I've not heard of it. No. It's big. It's a big one. All right. All right. So this one's gonna go viral. I just need you guys to really bring it together. Okay. All right. So basically, what's gonna happen is, do I have my plate of ketchup here? Okay, what? There it is. Yes. My plate of ketchup? Yes. I bring this everywhere I go. So. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to sit in your seat. I'm going to sit yeah. in your seat. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the idea of the challenge is I put my hand in this ketchup, and then I'm going to ask you for a napkin. Yeah. Right? You're going to look around. You're going to ask Danny, hey, is there, you have a napkin? Yeah. You're going to say, no, I don't no. have a napkin. Then you're going to go to him, and you're going to rip his shirt off aggressively. Right. And then you're going to come over and hand me the napkin, and I'm going to say, thanks, bro. Okay, I'm going to rip his shirt off. Yeah. We're going to be friends, right? After I rip your shirt off? Yeah. Okay? You didn't tell me I need to sign a release to this show. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be fun. This is going to go viral, guys. Okay, what's All right. Like, think about we it. trust this is like, you. This is, I'm putting my own rep on the line here. Yeah. Oh. Okay? Yeah. oh. So, all right, all right, all right. I don't want to film a bad TikTok. Okay, so, okay. all right, I need okay, you guys to okay. I, I appreciate this can be, that. This can yeah. be big for you guys. All right, right? Okay. okay, all right. And everyone in the background's here, too, so everyone's okay. going to get tagged. Come on. Okay. On the video. Oh, you're all going to get tagged. All right. Okay. So you're going to, you're going to come Okay. 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 All right, and if we don't get it the first time, it's fine. We'll pick it back up. It's not okay. Live. You know? All okay. right. But I will probably judge you guys if you don't nail it the first time. Yeah. But it's fine. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. All right. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All, All right. good, man. Action. Uh, hey, do you have a napkin? A, a napkin? Uh, no, I, I, I don't. Danny, do, do you have a napkin? <laughs> no, I do not have a napkin. Do you have a napkin? No. Uh, you know what? Come here for a second. I got an idea because it looks to me like... We got a napkin. Got a napkin. That, that was it. That's the whole thing. That was it. We yeah. did it. Oh, yeah. In just a few minutes, comedian Tammy Pescatelli is going to join the fun right here on the Talk Show. Hey, Tammy. Hey, how Hey there. My next guest is a hilarious stand-up comic who tours all over the country. You can see her specials Finding the Funny and Way After School Special on Prime. Please welcome Tammy Pescatelli. Uh, 
Well, thank you so much. It is so good to be here. I Let me tell tongues. you a little bit about me, in case you don't know. I'm 100% Sicilian. Yeah, thank you. And I'm married, so uh, that means I don't believe in divorce. I believe in disappearance. It's <laughs> minor adjustments. I knew marriage was tough. Uh, the day before I got married, my grandfather flew all the way in from Italy, uh, knocked on the door, said, Hey, Tam, today is the best day of your life. I said, but, Pop, I get married tomorrow. He goes, I know. Today is the best day. <laughs> no Damani. <laughs> I love my husband. You should marry someone who's your intellectual equal, okay? We did not do that. <laughs> it's still, you can still love them. I have a master's degree. He has a GED. Okay, not just one, two, because he sent away for an extra copy. <laughs> he's, he's a double major. Um, he has a lot of useless information because he watches all those shows. Amish Mafia, you ever see that? That's not real. My people barely have a mafia. They don't have a mafia, okay? What are they gonna do if you go against the Don? Cut off a horse's head and leave it in your bed? They'd have no ride home. <laughs> They're not watching, okay? It's all right. <laughs> he has a lot of useless, it always comes out at the most inopportune times. Like sometimes, like one night I was asleep. Dad asleep, I woke up, I was choking. I'm like, <coughs> he woke up, he said, what's wrong? I said, mm, I'm choking. He said, maybe you ate a spider. <laughs> what? He said the average person eats about eight spiders a year in their sleep. <laughs> oh, you're a moron, okay? Because now I can't sleep, because I don't know if I'm on spider one or spider eight. <laughs> I have to sleep with a nicotine patch over my mouth. I'm punching him in the gut, because if I gotta be awake, he's gotta be awake. Right? I'm thinking, what kind of sick sadist scientist is doing the research, watching seven spiders crawl in someone's mouth and not flicking out the eight? And I'm happy, okay? Except when we're in the car. That's the only time I'm not happy with him. Because he will follow the GPS as if it was Sacagawea with MapQuest, okay? <laughs> if it said take a left into the ocean, he would take a left into the ocean and then get mad at me. You don't know every way. <laughs> Maybe it's a shortcut. <laughs> uh, I do know, Moses, the sea did not part. <laughs> we're submerged right now. He said, you're just jealous. I said, of what? He said, you're jealous because I listened to her. <laughs> but I am jealous. I'm jealous she's somewhere else and I'm in the car with him, okay? <laughs> I want the GPS lady's life. It's not that I don't love, listen, it's hard. We have a kid, he's 14, that's what my son is smart and you can judge, no one says their kid is stupid. No one goes, oh my God, I gotta invest in Velcro shoes for the rest of my life. <laughs> he solved the Rubik's Cube when he was eight, no tricks. I, I, I was nuts, I was like, oh my gosh. He said, what's the matter, mommy, you never solved the Rubik's Cube? Uh, not for real. <laughs> I once peeled all the stickers off and told people that I did. When we signed him up for school, we had to fill out an application, write an essay, an essay. My husband goes, I'll write it, uh, no. <laughs> not only will he not get in, we'll lose custody. <laughs> like, that's not gonna. <laughs> but you have to marry someone who will love you through the good times and the bad times, right? That's it, right? Uh, I found out I have liver disease now uh, it, it made me, I gained a lot of weight. Uh, I gained so much weight that if I want to slip into something more comfortable, it's gonna have to be the dark. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> but I'm okay now, I'm okay. Like, but at the time I was very nervous. The doctor gives you all the worst case scenarios. And I said, what happens if I have to have a liver transplant? And my husband put his arms around me and he held me and he said, I'll give you one of my livers. <laughs> if you don't understand that joke, I'll see you at the reunions. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. And we're back. Cool. <laughs> Tammy, uh,
Pescatelli, what's that, Jewish? Yes, it yeah. is. Got um, it right away. All right, first of all, hilarious, beautiful. Hilarious. How do Thank you come up with your material? I grew up with a crazy family. You know, we didn't go to therapy. We were like, <laughs> unless it was court ordered. So, you know, like, right? I get it. <laughs> Bonaducci, you see? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we grew up with just that sense of humor where you sat around the kitchen table and you took the knocks. So when you went to school and someone picked on you, it didn't seem quite as bad. Oh, right, because yeah. Because you'd be things like, come so, home and see what daddy says. Things were so horrible says. at home that even abuse, <laughs> abuse at school seemed normal. That's a great, what a great plan. What a great plan. I think yeah. having a sense of humor about yourself yeah. helps you deal with everything. Yeah, that's where we disagree. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, all right, you talk a lot about your family, obviously. D do they uh, approve of this, or is this okay with them? Well, this is how the lights stay on. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut you up know? and take it, <laughs> right. or get another right. family. Um, and you know, yeah, they get it, they get it. You know, I don't really, my husband takes it. I don't really talk about my son too much because he's not, he he's didn't 14, sign up yeah? for it. Yeah, yeah, he's fun. You know, he didn't sign up for this. Like he's he's more excited to see Adam. You know that sure. he was like that's how his life is. But you know, yeah, they, of course they have to. Although my mother's favorite comedian is Sinbad, and she loves to tell me that. Yeah. Well, Sinbad can buy her Christmas presents. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you get it back. Oh my gosh. I love him too. Though. Are, are we are we out of time? Um, I, I do have something though. I don't know if they told you. I did put something, if you reach under your seat, there's gum. And any gum, <laughs> that'll be yours. <laughs> nice. How about it? Lightning fast. <laughs> I don't want this to end, but I think that that's our show. So I want to say thank you, Tammy Pascatelli. Thank, thank you, you Adam Waheed. Thank you, Danny Bonaducci. We'll see you all on TikTok. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, I think I love you, no, what am I so afraid of? You know, I'm afraid that I'm not sure of. I love that there's no cute door. Bambana, bambana, bambana. I think I love you, but that's what life is made of. Oh, I've never going to say, I never felt that way. Bambana. Thank you. God bless you.